Hello Town Acres families, Dr. Simmons here. Just want to kind of give you some updates again. Uh, what you'll see over the next couple of weeks, we're just going to post some different uh, short videos that will address some of the most frequently asked questions that we've received over the past couple of weeks. And even after watching these videos, if you have additional questions, feel free to call the school at any time and we're happy to answer those for you. As you notice today, I am wearing a mask. Uh, the video we posted yesterday, I was alone in my office properly distanced and so I was able to take the mask off and right now I have Colin Brooks uh, from central office here helping to do the filming and so since we are number one in a common area and number two uh, may be uh, kind of close to each other each of us are wearing a mask and so one of the most frequently asked questions we've received is will students be wearing a mask and the answer to that is yes for the majority of the day uh, in common areas and places like that they will wear a mask uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into our arrival plan uh, but in common areas, which for us would be hallways, uh, like on the way to related arts, and even in the morning when they arrive, uh, students will be going to some different areas and they'll have a mask on at that time. Uh, anytime that a teacher is close to them, working in close proximity, maybe just working with a kid one-on-one, -on -one, uh, they will need to put the mask on. If a teacher has a small group of students over at a side table uh, to where they are within six feet, they'll be wearing a mask during those times as well. Uh, the only times the mask will really come off uh, would be number one when they are in their classroom seated at their desk where we have appropriate spacing uh, with desk and rows all students facing forward you know, when they're settled in that spot the mask can come off and that's where the majority of instruction will take place uh, so we don't foresee the kids having to have a mask on continuously for any more than about 15 minutes in the morning during that arrival time and then 15 minutes at dismissal uh, so the majority of the time when they are sitting there at their desk receiving instruction um, properly spaced the mask can come off They'll wear the mask to lunch, but of course during lunch the mask can come off. We've ordered lanyards for all the students to where uh, they can just clip the mask uh, on that lanyard so they don't get gone during that time. And then the other time is recess. We'll talk more about recess on a different video, uh, but we will uh, be able to let them have those masks off at that time. You know, related arts, the same sort of thing. When they are properly distanced in their related arts classes, the mask will be able to come off. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with masks, and if you have additional questions, please make sure to let me know. Uh, as far as arrival in the morning, for you as a parent, the biggest thing is we're not going to be able to allow visitors in the building uh, once we start school on August the 10th. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to make sure we had an open house so that you are able to meet your child's teacher, your child's familiar with where to go. Uh, but when your child walks through the doors, uh, they'll be given a mask if they don't have their own. You know, we, we encourage you, if you already have your own, feel free to, to send those with your child. Uh, it can be a paper mask like this. It can be one of the cloth masks. Another good option is the gator mask. I have some of those to where, you know, you can always just constantly pull it up uh, when you need to over your mouth and nose. And then at other times when you're not needing it, you can just slide it down. Uh, it's kind of eliminating the, the chance of losing it. Uh, but for t students who don't, uh, the district has purchased uh, an incredible number of masks. But we'll have staff members here. If the student walks in without a mask, they'll get it. All of our direction is going to be going to the left prior to 8 o'clock. So from 7.45 until 8, we have our normal kind of holding areas for our students. Uh, normally, we dismiss students to their classrooms at 8.05. This year, we're going to do 8 o'clock to make sure we can keep our gathering size in each of these areas down as low as we can. So uh, we'll kind of walk this way. For us in the past, second, third, and fourth grade always went to the gym, uh, and they were all in the bleachers, and they were sitting pretty closely together. In order to make sure we can adequately distance those students, uh, for the gym this year, now any kid eating breakfast will go straight to the cafeteria. Uh, we have staff members up there. We've been able to add some tables to where we can properly space up there, uh, both in the morning and also at lunch. But when third and fourth graders who are not eating breakfast or when they finish, they'll come here until eight o'clock. Our fourth graders will be divided by homeroom in the bleachers, and it's kind of broken up nicely into four sections. So we would have a, a group for Mrs. Berry, Mrs. Bowman, Mrs. Loving, and Mrs. Tam. Third grade students will have divided uh, like at each wall to where we kind of have a, a designated space uh, to where students from that homeroom are staying together. Our second graders, instead of going to the gym this year, they'll be going to the little theater. Uh, we'll have a staff member in there. The good thing about in there, we are once again with uh, our second grade group. It is our second smallest group in the school, so we can properly space our second graders in there until eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, we'll line up uh, our students to go to class. Uh, we have staff members who will walk students uh, that direction. Uh, third and fourth grade, second grade will fall in behind them. You know, and this kind of falls in with some of the hallway behavior. You know, what we're telling students is almost a Frankenstein walk. 
to where if you're walking with your hands out, if you're close enough to touch someone, you need to make sure that you're backing up and giving some extra space. Kindergarten and first grade students will still go to the cafeteria like we've done in the past. For students who are eating breakfast, there's designated spaces for breakfast. The other students, they'll once again be sitting by their homeroom. And you'll kind of notice a theme over the course of the next couple of weeks with the videos of us trying to keep homerooms together as much as possible. This is very important in the event of having to do contact tracing. Um, so you're going to kind of hear when we talk about recess, lunch, arrival, dismissal, trying to keep those groups of kids in there the best we can. At 8 o'clock, uh, students from kindergarten and first grade, we dismiss one class at a time. We'll be dismissed from the cafeteria. Once again, single file with adults with them, making sure we're keeping space between the students. So that's our plan for arrival. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at simmonst at jcschools.org, or you can call the school Monday through Friday between 8 and 4. Thank you.